Greetings everybody, I am here today to talk about passion fruits. Now these passion fruits were very kindly sent to me by Bruce. So Bruce, thank you very much. So we've got two different varieties of passion fruit. We've got the purple and the yellow. And these are both things that I have reviewed before. However, today we're going to do something a little different. I'm going to compare them and I'm going to show you how you can use the entire passion fruit except for a very very small percentage of it. So you may notice on the purple passion fruits one of them has a bunch of little lines on it. Uh, that is just from how it grew. Those are totally safe. And this one you can see is very wrinkly. A lot of times you actually want a passion fruit to be wrinkly because it'll be a little sweeter on the inside. Yep, and inside it's a hollow cavity with some really juicy pulp inside. Passion fruits have such a nice smell to them. They're very powerful though, so eating these out of hand can be a little intense. So today we're going to do something a little bit different. So not a whole ton of pulp on the inside, but it should be enough to do what I want to do with it, and that is make a jam. Okay, first let's try the purple one, just on its own. Mmm! Very powerful. The um, tartness on that is not quite a lemon, but it's pretty close. I'd say it's like nine and a half. So let's call it a nine. Don't have the technology to do halves yet. I mean, how do you describe passion fruit to someone who hasn't had it? I mean, it's tropical. It's a tropical taste. It's like fruit punch. Is a lot, usually has a lot of passion fruit in it. So think the fruit punch, maybe a little bit more of a pineapple sort of flavor. There's a bit of orange, like citrusy kind of flavor in there also. It's good. If you haven't had a passion fruit, try it out. Um, and the purple ones are more of like the standard uh, passion fruit flavor. This yellow one is a little bit more uncommon. That one's a 10. It's a 10 on Saratus. This is more powerful. Tastes very similar, but with this one, swap out that orange taste for lemon. More of a lemon taste. Still very pineapple-y, still very fruit punchy. Also, I'd say there's like a hint of a melon flavor in there also. That's kind of interesting. But what I'm going to do right now is a little bit uncommon. I'm going to prepare the rinds. You can eat the rinds. Usually how this is done is you make a jam out of it, which I might do but uh, I need to see how much I end up getting out of these things. So here's what you do. Okay, so I've got a little Tupperware here. I'm gonna empty out all of these passion fruit pulplets into this container. As you can see, the, uh, the color on the inside is also quite different. The uh, purple ones are more yellow. The yellow ones are more orange. So, not a whole lot in there, maybe uh, three-fourths of a cup. This is going to get refrigerated. Okay, we've got water in a pot on the heat. We're going to take passion fruit rinds and place them face down into the water. I guess you might want to wiggle them around a little bit so they get more submerged. So this is going to stay on a low heat for one hour. It's been one hour. You see they're kind of plumping up a little bit. Why I'm doing this is that these are packed with pectin and that's why this is used to make jam. And um, by going through this process, it'll be easy to uh, harvest that, that pectin. And you can see it actually swallowed up most of that water. I think I might actually want to put a little bit more in. That way it can soak up some more. And what I'm going to do now is let this come to room temperature and then put it in the fridge overnight. Okay, it's been the next day and what do we have? Yep, that got a lot thicker. Using a spoon, I'm going to just kind of scoop out as much of this as I can. You don't want to use the very outer portion 
of it because that stuff uh, is just kind of like hard and unpleasant. You're not going to want to put that in your jam unless you like kind of like little shards of glass in your jam, which I don't think you do. So I've got about a cup or so of the pulp here. I'm also retaining the water here just in case I need it. So here's a little chunk of it. This is something I've never seen anyone do. I'm just going to try a piece of this raw. It's kind of bitter, but it does have a touch of the... Oh, and slimy. Definitely has pectin in it. You can see why it's used to thicken. The flavor isn't terrible, but it kind of tastes like... Um, like a very bland apple. If you took like an apple and sucked out almost all the flavor with a little hint of passion fruit thrown in, probably from any trace fruit that was in that water. But it also feels like you're chewing on paste. Try a little bit of the, uh, the yellow one also. Similar, a little different, but not by much. Definitely something where I can see using it. Now before you call me out for not using the hollowed out shells, these make excellent, fancy teacups. Ooh, that is over full. Okay. Mmm. That's good. Okay, pot is going on the heat. That's going to go in there. I'm also going to take some of the liquid from the pot and put it in there. If you go online and look at recipes for passion fruit jam that do this, they always use different amounts of passion fruits, and passion fruits go, they come in a lot of different sizes. So I don't know how this is going to turn out, I, I'm just using the amount that I have. If, this is if you use the rinds and pulp of four, but the amount of pulp that's inside them, how big the rinds are, those vary greatly. So. Uh, this is just going to be me kind of winging it, and we'll see what happens. going to mush it up a little bit with this potato masher. A lot of the recipes actually call for you to chop these up into little bits. I don't think that's necessary. Okay, in goes the pulp. And one cup of sugar. I'm gonna let this cook till it reaches a jam-like consistency. Yep, so it's been about 15 minutes. That worked. There, there is a ton of pectin in those shells. So this right now is already looking like jam. And if this goes in the fridge, it's gonna thicken up even more. So let's see how this looks tomorrow. All right, my passion fruit jam. Whoops. <laughs> All right, my passion fruit jam has set, and not only has it set, it has gotten very firm. Like that pectin in those rinds really firmed this up. This is actually not so much like a jam. This is more like a fruit cheese. If you watched my uh, quince episode from a while ago, I made quince cheese, which is where you basically make jam, but you make it like super, super thick where you actually can slice it and put it on bread like cheese. Uh, this is like that. This is very, very firm. I think I probably could have gotten away with putting a lot more water in this one to give it more of a jam-like consistency because this stuff, you need to cut it with a knife. It is like so, so firm actually. That's what I'm going to do. Okay, so I've got a slice of it on a piece of homemade bread. Let's give this a try. Mmm, that's delicious. Really, really good. Passion fruit has such a strong flavor to it that even though I just put a little bit of pulp in there and so much rind, you really taste the passion fruit. I was worried that those rinds, because they don't taste especially good on their own, that it might kind of give it a little bit of like an icky taste, but you don't taste it like at all. I would absolutely make this again. If I get passion fruits again, totally gonna do this. I think I might adjust things a little bit. It, I probably add more water so I don't have this 
passion fruit cheese sort of thing. I mean, that stuff's good, but you know, if I want a jam, I would do it differently. I also would put a little bit less sugar in there. It's very, very sweet. I put what was recommended in a recipe and turned out to be quite a lot. I think I would probably half the amount of sugar in there. Yeah, overall though, super, super good. Thank you once again to Bruce for sending me these uh, passion fruits. Really cool to get a chance to try making something using the rind. Those passion fruit rinds are good. Don't throw those away. You can make a really tasty jam with them. It might actually work in like a, like even like a soup or a stew or something. It's a fairly innocuous kind of flavor and it does a really good job at thickening. So there's definitely a lot of use in passion fruit rinds. I think that's about it though. So I will see you all next time. Bye-bye. I want to give a special shout out to AltPod and Smarter Every Day. They are mega patrons over on Patreon.com. Patreon is how this channel happens, it's how I can afford to do all the things that I do. So if you want to help me out by supporting the channel and getting some bonuses along the way, check out the description. I also have these shirts for sale. Those are in the description as well. See you next time. Bye.